Hello everyone and welcome to my installation of the AUX 12,000 BTU 115 volt Smart Ductless Mini Split Air Conditioner. This installation begins with the disinstallation of my EQK Mini Split. I've had it in now for about eight months and it has developed refrigerant leaks. We are using a black light here to illuminate the refrigerant dye. The dye is seeping through fissures that have developed inside of the evaporator coils. The evaporator had been icing up. This was a sure indication of low refrigerant. And so we had to pump the lines back down and add several pounds of new refrigerant. And during that process, we also added a fluorescent dye. As you can see, the dye is fluorescing inside of the condensate tube, which is what you would expect to see because the condensate grips directly off of the evaporator coils. These leaks were beyond my skill level to repair, so I decided to change the entire system out. And so I ordered a new aux from Lowe's, but this is the damage that I had on the first system that I received. All around the valves and the sheet metal that supported the valves was dented as well as you'll see in a minute these fins were compressed and distorted. One can only imagine the kind of problems I would have had if I had gone on and attempted to install this condenser. And so I took the entire system back down to my local Lowe's and they were very good at offering me a replacement which I promptly took them up on. The second mini split system arrived a little bit faster than the first one. It came in two separate shipments and took about a week and a half to arrive. I decided to open the condenser box first just because the first condenser had been damaged and I was anxious to see that this one arrived without any damage. As you can see the line set is draped over the top of the condenser. I'm not sure that was a good idea as we will see in a moment. The line set when uncoiled should be about 12 foot long. This is the USB wireless transducer. It plugs into a port on the evaporator unit. We'll be scanning this QR code to download the app that will allow our mobile devices to control the system. Here's the electrical cord for the mini split. It has spade lugs on one end and the wires are nicely prepped on the other end for insertion terminals. Now is a good time to check the condenser unit for shipping damage. Oh, and here's the specifications for the system. The refrigerant capacity and its type are particularly important for future service. Moving to the back of the unit, we immediately see some damage on the fins. Remember how the line set was draped over the unit? I'm wondering if that had anything to do with this damage. I've seen scuffs like this before and the unit was actually able to continue working without leaking so I'm hoping for the best on that. There doesn't seem to be any more obvious damage so I think we're gonna hook this up and run with it. It's time to unbox the evaporator. So while I'm cutting and pulling and hacking here We'll discuss the initial picture that was presented at the beginning of this section. Despite the handle with care messages on the top of the box, it had a pretty significant hole in its side. The hole looks serious, but luckily nothing was damaged. There's the condensate line, and there's the remote. Easiest way to get this evaporator out of the box is to flip it over. And here's the power cord 
that you will use to connect the evaporator to the outside unit's electrical terminal strip. There's a package that contains the literature for the air conditioner, as well as the batteries for the remote and the holder for the remote. The manual contains essential instructions for installation and remote control operation. This explains where the USB Wi-Fi module plugs into. Here are the QR codes for downloading the mobile apps. This mini split is rated at 17 SEER and has an HSPF of 9. My previous mini split was rated at 19 and 10 respectively. However, it cost several hundred dollars more and did not have the additional capacity of the new AUX. Digital versions of the manuals are available for download on the Lowe's website, and you can find them on the middle of the page. So it looks like we have all the parts that we need to install the mini split. Let's get started. The mounting plate for the indoor unit, or the evaporator, is attached to the back with a shipping screw. Remove the screw so that you can take the plate and get it ready to mount on your wall. There's a variety of hole patterns that give you a lot of options for mounting the plate. The indoor unit should be at least six feet off the floor and six inches from the ceiling and eight inches of clearance on either side. Here are the instructions for attaching the plate to your wall. Note that the wall through hole for your line set needs to be angled downward. There is no template for making the hole and aligning the wall plate. I calculated that the wall mount needed to be four and three quarter inches from the center of the hole and about level with the bottom of the hole. After you have bent the refrigerant lines out 90 degrees from the back of the unit, attach the condensate hose extension to the the line that is attached to the unit, the condensate line that is attached to the unit has a mind of its own. And so I decided to tie wrap it down while I hung the unit on the wall mount. There are several slots on the housing that make it easy to attach the tie wraps. Hopefully this will keep the hose straight and prevent water from pooling in the line. I think Ox needs to improve the design of this condensate line layout, and especially the joint where the external condensate line attaches to the internal condensate line. The joint location is awkward and makes it hard to bend the condensate line around to go through the hole in the wall. Secure that joint with tape and then place the line set inside of the split insulation tube. So remember that electrical cord that came packaged with the evaporator unit? Well, we're going to get ready to hook it up now. First thing you do is remove the access plate and this clamp. The clamp secures the cord from moving and it also provides strain relief for the electrical cord. We will be feeding this cord through the back of the unit and into the electrical hookup cavity. I am using a long tie wrap that I found packaged with the cord and I'm wrapping the end up so that I can feed it through without it catching or binding up. You could even use electrical tape to provide the same function. Simply grab the cord when it appears and pull it into the cavity. Next, remove the tie wrap. Next, I secured the line with the strain relief that we removed earlier. By placing the line at the edge of the trimmed insulation, you will leave yourself with the maximum amount of slack available to secure and terminate the wire ends. Each of those wires is labeled as well as color coded, although they don't follow conventional electrical color codes. Labels that are on the wire will correspond with the same label on the termination block. I have already loosened the terminal block screws so I can easily slip the spade lugs under each of the terminal screws and secure it 
with a Phillips headed screwdriver. Again, double check the label that is attached to each wire and make sure that it is the one that needs to go to the screw that is labeled on the terminal block. The ground wire is color coded green so you should have no difficulty in finding where to screw that one down at. However, I did notice it was a little longer than the other ones. No biggie, just make a loop in it and then tighten it down. This is a good time to double check your work and to make sure that the wires are on their correct terminals. Finally button up the hatch and reinstall the cover plate. Try to remember that the cover plate is plastic and you don't want to force or push too hard on anything and hopefully this will be the last time that you will have to remove this cover plate and put it back on. Connecting the indoor unit to the outdoor unit is very simple. I've already hooked up the line to the disconnect box and the indoor unit has been terminated on the top tier of the terminal strip. All of the wires have labels on them. It is important to follow the labels and not the color code here. The wire color does not indicate function. So we have mounted the indoor unit and inserted the line set, condensate line, and electric cord through the hole in the wall. I'm removing the cap off of the smaller line or the liquid line. The line had been previously evacuated and filled with nitrogen for shipping. What you are hearing is the atmosphere replacing the nitrogen in the line set. I use Nylog Blue to help seal the joint. This helps to lubricate and seal the joint when you attach the compressor side line set. The easiest way to do this is to finger tight the connection first and then use your wrenches to apply the final torque to the joint. All I can say here is not too tight and not too loose. We'll come back later to double check and snug these joints back once again. The larger line or the suction line is next. Once again unscrew the cap that it ships with. Apply the nylock blue Prep the compressor side line for attachment too, and in this instance I'm also applying the nylog blue to the flare end of the copper tubing. Getting these nuts attached can be tricky business. You'll want to make sure that the, the fitting is parallel, the fittings are parallel to each other. and be extra careful that you do not cross thread this connection. And you'll want to use your wrenches once again to tighten this joint. And again, the specification is not too tight and not too loose. I have already aligned and hand tightened the liquid line to the compressor side and we are going to do the large line next. I have already attached the smaller line to the compressor side and hand tightened the fitting. So now we're going to hook up the larger tube and Make sure that we've got a little nylog blue on all the mating surfaces. You'll want to make sure that these, when these lines come into the fitting, that they are straight and that there's no binding or any kind of offset that might cause a, a leak down the way. As you can see here, 
I am doing a test fit. And it turns out I'm not I'm not real happy with how that that line is mating to the brass fitting. So I gave it another little tweak. And this time it feels like a good fit. At this point, you will want to just snug the line set nut up to the brass fitting. And before making your final pull on the wrench, use another wrench to offset any torque that might damage the brass fitting side of the connection. To pump the system down, I'll be using a low pressure side of a four-way AC manifold gauge set, as well as a ductless mini-split system charging vacuum port adapter, and this single-stage vacuum pump. Once the lines are connected, turn on the vacuum pump. You will notice that there is vapor escaping from the exhaust port on the pump. That's normal. I was able to achieve a minus 30 inches of mercury relatively quickly, but I continued to pump the system down for another 30 minutes to make sure that the moisture was removed from my system. When it came time to turn off the vacuum pump, I closed off the vac line before shutting the pump down. I then waited a couple of hours and made sure that I did not lose any vacuum. Now it's time to release the refrigerant that was stored inside of the compressor unit. It just so happens that my 5 millimeter bicycle tool works great for this. Here you can see that the refrigerant is being released into the system. After turning off the blue line on the gauge set, I proceeded to uncap the service port on the large line and proceeded to open this valve with the same 5 millimeter Allen wrench that I had used previously. Now we're all done with hooking up the line set. Remember the USB Wi-Fi module that I described earlier? Well, we're going to install it. My unit came with a printout that tells you exactly where it goes. I scanned the QR code for Android and downloaded the app to my phone. For more explicit instructions, refer to the owner's manual. Here's how my Wi-Fi USB module looked after I had connected it to the cable. The USB cable for the Wi-Fi module exits from beneath the access panel to the indoor units and is held by a clamp at the top of the service door. The app is called AC Freedom and allows you to control your aux mini split from any place that has a wireless router that you can connect to. You can turn the aux mini split on or off, change the mode from heat to cold, and also control temperature by swiping on the virtual knob at the top of the app's display. You can control the mini split's fan speed also, as well as the air handler's swing direction. The app is easy to understand and use Everything seems to work, and it's been very reliable. So far, my new AUX mini split is working very well. I live in North Florida, and it's the middle of January. We've had some freezing nights, as well as some 80 degree plus days. I'm using this mini split to heat and cool a 12 by 32 barn style shed. It's close to 600 cubic feet with a poorly insulated ceiling. Here's the condenser running on a 30 degree night and the coil vanes are icing up due to the high humidity of the ambient air. 
When this happens, the aux has sensors that detects the ice, and the condenser will go into a defrost mode. My aux had no trouble melting this ice. However, it did a poor job of melting the ice at the bottom of the coils, where the coil veins virtually touched the metal of the pan. This defrost cycle would happen several times during the night, but this ice never melted and I was afraid that it was going to damage the coils. So I shopped around and I located a six foot length self-regulating heat cable. I carefully drilled some holes in the base plate where the ice had been forming. I then inserted tie wraps into the holes and wrapped them around the cable making sure that the flat part of the heat cable was making good contact against the base plate metal. I also had to install a GFI outlet to plug the cable into. I spent about $30 on parts and half a day for the installation. This mini split actually works well down to freezing temperatures and I was able to maintain about 65 degrees in the building with a supplemental electric heater that turned on at about 68 degrees. Overall, I've been pleased with the performance of this budget mini split. It would have been easy to spend twice as much for a mini split with the same capacity. However, the more expensive ones have higher seer ratings. This concludes my video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.